Okay, welcome back. Our guest is Indy Kato. She is a spokesperson of the Obidati Presidential Campaign Council, and um, she's talking with us um, uh, about uh, the party's grassroots project, but then it is the political season, and uh, people are calling in, and uh, they have other areas you know, of the whole enterprise that they want to talk about. And um, she hasn't uh, rebuffed uh, any uh, observation or question so far. So I, I think we're still good. Now, let me return to um, the governor of Kaduna State and his um, uh, statements as it related to um, your uh, candidate and uh, his categorization of his, of his uh, chances. Um, this whole crucial business of Every politician who is going to win needs 25 percent in uh, two thirds of the states of the federation. Um, it was his assertion that it wasn't going to happen in the northern area, and uh, you've addressed that, you know, a bit. Uh, but would you like to return to the point, since he was being categorical, that the north, there's no way they're going to go with Pitobi. But here we are talking about the party's grassroots project. Um, there is grassroots. There is a grassroots. Is there a sense in which Governor, you know, uh, uh, El Rufai uh, doesn't know anything about the grassroots and especially the fact that you are focused on it on a grassroots uh, as, as a project and that this might probably um, be one of the reasons why you are as optimistic as you are and perhaps it's his own lack of knowledge of the work that you're doing in the grassroots that is uh, leading to the kind of uh, assertions he's making that oh, we can't cut it in the north. Yeah, one would not say Erufai lacks knowledge, I would tell you that. But one would say, and I would say categorically, that he's being very dishonest. Um, Erufai knows the North very well. He knows that Northern Nigeria is not a monolith. But it serves his political interests and serves what he wants to achieve, to keep pro projecting Northern Nigeria as one place that has just one kind of people, you know, and then, you know, try to put down other kinds of people in Northern Nigeria. And that is exactly what he came on TV to attempt to do. Northern Nigeria is not a monolith. There are so many people. It's such a heterogeneous society. And as you have seen with Peter Obi's campaigns, when he goes to places, look, there's next to no mobilization done and people come out in large numbers. The other thing is he's going to places that have largely been abandoned during campaigns. So to point it as, Oh, these are just small enclaves. No, these are places that people look to for votes, but do not even bother to engage. And Peter Obi has changed the way in which campaigning is being done. We are beginning to see other candidates copy him and try to go to all of these places too, because they are places that candidates feel entitled these major political parties feel entitled to getting votes from, but not necessarily, you know, feel the urge to go there and engage these people. They just, they just engage the political actors and feel that, you know what, the political actors in this place, you know, the people who are part of our rent-seeking system in these places will go back home and tell the people to vote accordingly and people will vote accordingly. But them around, the people are on the side with Peter Obi. And Peter Obi has engaged these people. And when you see when he goes to these places and the way they, the people engage him, you would know that, you know what, these votes are going to come out. And I think he's being faced with that ex existential crisis. He's being faced with that reality that, for, you know, this election is going to come out that, you know, there's so many parts of northern Nigeria. Northern Nigeria, no, no, northerners do not just wake up and think in one way. Northerners think about their future, the, their own personal interests and how things are going to move the north forward. I think he's being faced with this reality that is making Erufai speak out like this. And like I said before, he, he ran to TV to do damage control. We have not really heard from him since the beginning of the campaign. And um, here he is speaking now and crying from TV station to TV station. He should tell you that this person knows that his campaign the candidate he supports is, is largely a threat and there's a need for him to do something and I think it's with this he's speaking and it is with this he's projecting all of these insecurities, it's with this he's, he's, he's projecting all of this dishonesty and, and I think he knows, he knows the truth, Erufai knows the truth, he's a knowledgeable man, he's my governor, he's a knowledgeable man, he knows the truth but he's very dishonest. Okay, um, now another key point that all politicians are speaking about is go get your PVC, speaking to the electorate. Um, give me your assessment of how well that is going in your party, um, because um, you know it's, it's, it's crucial, and um, we've heard about some people saying that they have difficulties, uh, others not so much. You, wherever the PVC is being, you know, uh, given to the people, uh, you see a very large crowd, and it would seem that um, in certain areas, um, uh, labor uh, supporters. You know, they sort of uh, mass the place. Uh, give me your assessment of 
how well that campaign is going uh, to your uh, obedience, as they are referred to. That's, that ended uh, yesterday, the 5th, right? Yesterday was the 5th of, uh, of, of February. That ended yesterday. And, yeah. um, you know, there's, there's no party that has pushed so much for, for PVC collection, for, for registration to vote and for PVC collection as Labour Party has, especially the young people in the Labour Party. I think at this point we need to applaud them for all they have done. People bringing out their resources to making sure people go out to register to vote, all of that work put in to make sure that there's no voter apathy. I think that you can point to the lack of voter apathy in this election, to the work that's, you know, the groundwork and all of that, uh, the, the, the work on all, all, all multimedia platforms that Labour Party has done, and I think that that is impressive. We need to applaud these people. Um, of course, this has brought forth reward. There has been an upward surge in the number of voters. We can see that this is not an election that will be marred by voter apathy. And a large number of these voters are young people. Young people, this is the election. This is a very deciding election. There's a generational shift in this election, young people are going to be the major deciders of this election. And I think that young people have spoken loudly as to which candidate they support. Uh, unfortunately, you know, INEC did not really step up as we would expect. Um, there are lots of irregularities marrying the collection of PVCs. Many people going to collect their PVCs and hearing stories here and there. As of even up to yesterday, people said that when they got to, 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 to the INEC offices to collect or the collection centers to collect their PVCs, they still heard stories. They still were being told that their PVCs are not ready on the last day. So at this point, those who are missing out have been disenfranchised by INEC, and it is such a shame. I think that we need to have a serious conversation as, as to how INEC dropped the ball in this election and did not step up with respect to PVC collection. Um, they didn't handle this well enough. And unfortunately, a lot of people are disenfranchised. Regardless, many people still got to collect their PVCs. Many people struggled for days to collect their PVCs, raised awareness. We did so much work on raising awareness, on pushing people to go to uh, collect their PVCs. And it has yielded results. We have seen a rise in collection of PVCs. We have seen a rise in, in voter registration, in young people registering to vote, even in rural areas everywhere. People have come out to register to vote. And on the 25th, people speak loudly with their votes. Okay. Uh, Ada in Joss. Good morning to you, ma'am. Good morning to your guys in the castle. You are off air here now. Uh, we are on air. We are on okay, air. Your own end now. In your own end. We are live. Uh, okay, okay. Yes. You are saying that you've no, lost. Yeah, 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 it's Lagos now. Hmm? Okay, please, please carry on. Pardon? Yes. Uh, okay, now. Indy can uh, hear you. I you can, know? and the viewers can. Yes, I hear. I learned that Indy Castle is there. Okay, I'm very happy that Indy Castle is honestly. What I want to say here is that. I wish you put that Labour Party more close to their elbows, you know, Kayuri. When I watched what was happening, I mean, in recent times, you know, I was so shocked when I was really uh, delighted or what, you know, when on one of the TV programs, somebody, you know, one of the governors admitted on the other side, admitted that Labour Party would have a 16, uh, I mean, 25% uh, in 16, 16 states. You can't believe it. I, I was really, I couldn't believe it. The way he said it, you know, because he was laying so much emphasis on no structures, no this, no that, and the, the anchor was saying, if people, somebody who has no structure, according to you, no senator, no um, in the governor, this and that, and is making this impact, 16, uh, 25 percent in the uh, 16 states, then what are you talking about? And you know, you know, he, he just brushed outside his side that he, the, the presidential candidate is more like a Hollywood actor for them. That's by the side. All of that. Uh, uh, okay, um, Ada, th thank you very much. Uh, Indy, you heard Ada there, and um, you, you, you heard what she said. Uh, it, it, all, it, it reminds me of the fact that um, it's like uh, Labour doesn't have the complete uh, complement of candidates. It's not everywhere, for instance, that uh, Labour has uh, senatorial candidates. Um, what, 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 how would you speak, to, speak on that? How would you speak to that? In terms of being ready, I mean, we're not the company. only party. We're not the only. We're not the only party that is going through that. I'm sure in some states, APC has also been dis, uh, disqualified. PDP has its issues too. Some parties are still in the court, you know. So we're not the only ones. Um, what we have is a candidate again. You know, we had addressed this at the beginning of this show that has name recognition and people are supporting fully. Now, I would say that this election is the people, the people versus the political class, and that's what we are seeing clearly. And the political class does not understand how elections will be will be won without them. You know, they used to. We are the ones who 
who hold these people. We are the ones, you know, we are the super voters. We hold these voters on in the, in the palm of our hands. We get to dictate. And now they are seeing voters going the other way, and they, they can't seem to believe it. I think this was more believable uh, in, in my place. Again, I'll give example with, with my place when we went for the town hall meeting in southern Kaduna. And our elders, a lot of our elders couldn't believe what they were seeing. You know, people who didn't have to be mobilized, they rushed to the hall. The whole place was flooding with people wanting to see the candidate, wanting to see Peter Obi, engage Peter Obi on issues. And that's when it dawned on them that, look, all the efforts and what they are putting towards, you know, trying to get uh, a certain situation, we'll, 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 go, we'll go a different way. We'll go, in favor in, we'll go in favor of Peter Obi because at this point, people have decided. And I think that this would be a new dawn for Nigerian politics where people, no one person can hold voters and say, you know what, because I'm governor, because I'm senator, everybody on that means going to vote a certain way. People have woken up. These people have not been able to change our lives when we're suffering this bad. So we see no reason why, you know, a senator or, or a governor who cannot do anything for us during, during this NERA crisis, who cannot do anything for us during the fuel crisis, who has not been able to stop you know, the, the, the killings against us, will come and dictate who we vote for. Our vote is personal, and we're going to go and make that personal statement. And that's what is happening right now. It's the people versus the political class. Okay. Uh, Chris in London has called in. Good morning to you, Chris. That horrible sound indicates that I just lost Chris. Uh, Chris had called in from the UK. Uh, so sorry about that, Chris, that uh, the call dropped. Uh, but uh, I want to thank Ndi Kato for going, you know, wherever the conversation uh, does. Uh, we wanted to talk about the party's <laughs> grassroots project. And, you know, she started off telling us that even an app towards that purpose was launched uh, recently. And it's all about connecting people at different levels up and down the country. Uh, am I saying it right, Ndi? That that's what that app is all about. Once you download yes, of it, course. how, how yes, does that app course. work? Uh, you what? You're supposed to get it at the Google Play. How does it work? How would it? I work? mean, you download it and you sign up, and uh, you download it and you sign. Up. I wish I could do a physical <laughs> work okay. for you, so but it's, it's, it's not possible it's, to do that. It's uh, like yes. a, a a bit. It's a bit similar to being on a WhatsApp group, for example. Almost. Yes. You're yes. You, yes. You, you download yes. it, you sign up, and you find your community. Yes, you connect and you find your community up in there. And that, that's, uh, that's, that's about it. Um, I, I, wish, I wish I could show you. I, I, and you've spoken, whatever, on the but, uh, fact, yeah. you, you've spoken on the fact that your, that your adversaries uh, say that all these refined, uh, highfalutin things that they're, done, that they're doing, um, uh, largely, the level of literacy and education in Nigeria, if you're going to make a wide uh, impact, uh, you've got to factor in the, you know, on, you know, the people who don't have the uh, uh, internet, who are not sophisticated. But that's oh, the, the app is not the only way. It's not the only way. The, of course, the app, the app is not the only way. So, you know, yes. It's we're just one of them. In every way. So we're just saying, look, for those, it's just one of them. For those who can, you can sign up here. But there's so see. much more effort going, up, uh, going on in the grassroots that, yes, many people are okay. doing whatever it is they I, I, can. This is just trying to gather as many people in one space as possible, but it's, it's not the only way, please. I, I get you, Ndi. Uh, Chris, thank you, Chris. Chris is back. Chris in London is back. What? Just as I was announcing him back, yes, I heard yes. that. <laughs> I heard that dropped call sign again, uh, sound again. Oh, Chris, first of all, thank you. Thank you for making the effort. I don't know if you want to try again now that we're speaking. I'll tell you what, Chris, if you can try again, I'll interrupt myself mid-sentence. I'll even apologize to India and interrupt her too uh, so that uh, you can come in uh, from <laughs> London. You've been quite persistent. Uh, in the meanwhile, uh, Mazi Okoroafo is calling in from Arochuku. Good morning, Mazi. Good morning, Taju. Good morning, our guest. I want to find out for our guest. Now, Good morning. we have seen that United Nations report that out of school, Nigerians. Now, if they say, for example, the party comes on board, how are you going to solve this issue of out of school? Now, that was the year report is outstanding. But presently now, because of the, uh, the redesign, I don't know it's funny. Today in Nigeria, I have taken a statistic that in some houses, where they have children that go to school from house, they students. They go to school on Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Because 
Their parents cannot afford transport money because of scarcity of food and redesign that are not. So how would you handle that so if you are to be in government today? Good morning. Mazu Krafo is my name from Amazon United States. Thank you, Mazi Okoroafo. Ndi, how, how, how would that work? Uh, in other words, what would be Peter Obi's and Peter, the Peter, Peter Dachi team? What would be their approach to what seems to be as something of an, of an imbroglio uh, in the southeast right now? This is, I mean, it's disheartening to hear, to be honest. Let's keep campaigning aside. You can agree with me that hearing that kind of thing, I mean, it, it shook me hearing him say that. Um, but, you know, going back to what we'll do, in the first place, Peter will be campaign or the, the Peter will be government. It's not going to bring in policies, you know. It's, we're, we're very focused on people-friendly policies. And policies like this are just against the people. Just to hear that children can't even go to school. Like, hearing the, the effects of this narrow redesign policy is really sad. But, you know, in the first place, the first thing to do, and that's one thing that this government keeps doing. This government tends to throw up policies without thinking about how it's going to affect the Nigerian people, without thinking about this ripple effect. Effects. Look at what is happening in the Southeast and with this man saying, you know, children not being able to go to school. Look at the effect it's going to have on their learning. The government is not putting that into it. I don't know if this government has any proper, you know... Could I interrupt you briefly? Chris is back. On governance in this I, I, I beg your pardon. Indeed. Yeah. I really beg your pardon. Chris is back. Uh, good morning, Chris. Uh, yeah, good morning. Um, ah. What I just want to say is that um, um, Labour Party, it seems they are really pulling weight. But I just thank God the way it is going on, because at least it will change the mindset of most of our old school, um, sorry for saying, old school politicians, that even if Labour Party doesn't even enter, I pray they enter, but even if it doesn't enter, at least they've created a landmark in this type of um, election that anybody can come in to be the president, to be the governor, to put in their effort and make Nigeria better. Are you getting it? Yes, because we can hear you. Most of us, yeah, most of us who are in um, my friends who are in the UK, not that we are enjoying what is happening here. Friend, we are enjoying it to some extent, but the home, the real African home, we are really missing it. Oh, and the oh, basic oh. issue is just because of the situation in the country. Our leaders have really failed us. Like me, before I left the Nigeria, I was jobless for over three years. Before I got the opportunity, the little opportunity I had to come here. And while I was in Nigeria, I've been to, we have about um, how many states we have? It's only two states I've not visited in, um, in um, Nigeria. Then when I was still working with um, MTN. And you see the, all the issues and here and there. When I was still there, we didn't have the issue of Boko Haram and every other thing. But a year later, while still working there, you find out that insecurity was more people are scared and we need more security and the issue of data once labor party enters i want them to just do one thing they should collect that because with data the, a lot of jobs will be done like in the uk here yeah, they have a, the data will show where and where one is but nigeria anything can happen Fine, we have CCTV who can capture people, but how can they capture somebody who has stolen in uh, or your state and is in uh, maybe Lagos state? It's not easy, but with the data that are available, you'll be able to capture things and things will be done. That's all right, all, 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 all right then. Uh, thank you very much, Chris, and again, thanks for your persistence. Uh, the third time, uh, the third time was a charm. Uh, thank you uh, very much. Um, in the, he's saying, among other things, that um, the way he sees it, um, what Labour Party has done, uh, it's like we can't go back to, where, to, to how we were before in terms of uh, electioneering. He feels that a, a, a new watermark has been reached. Uh, what would be, well, go on, please react to him or respond to him. I mean, I, 
I, I, I, I agree with him. I agree, I agree totally with him. Um, there has been a seismic shift in the way that electioneering happens in Nigeria. Elections have gone back to the issues. I always say this, and you know, at the risk of sounding like a broken record, if Peter Obi was not running by now, we would be discussing who went to London, who went to Dubai, who drinks the best pure water on the street, whose wife can fry a cara, and all of that. But you see that in this campaign season, people have had to come and defend their ideas, and politicians or candidates who cannot defend their ideas are finding that their campaigns are beginning to lag and take a back seat. And that is the kind of situation we want in Nigeria, and I'm glad that Peter Obin is doing that. If for nothing else, we have created a change just in the way elections happen in Nigeria and the way campaigning happens in Nigeria. And that kind of change that, you know, our campaign has been able to create, the Peter Obi's character, uh, uh, Peter Obi as a person, as a politician, as a, as a technocrat has been able to create, is something that we are hoping to replicate in government. That this sense of seriousness is the same thing that we're going to translate when we get into government, and, and that's very important. Um, again, back to the, the issue with children uh, not, not being in school. Policies are supposed to, you know, when, when policies are being planned, we're supposed to look at a well-rounded manner in which, look, how does this affect the people? What will be the ripple effect of these policies? What's the end game of this policy before a policy is put into, is, is put into practice? Unfortunately, this government repeatedly fails to do that and ends up putting people in so much trouble. And then after people putting people in trouble, when they come and attempt to fix their mess, any little, any little success they have at fixing the mess that they created, they celebrate it as, as if it is some big issue. And that is the same thing they are going to do here. They the president has come to ask us to give him seven days, seven days of suffering, seven days of lagging. People have died because of this issue. It is a huge shame. And I just want to tell the caller that, please, when Peter Obi gets into government, this is not the kind of way any sensible government will conduct itself and will be no different. We will not operate in this way. We will operate like a sensible government. All policies must be people friendly. Well. I think that's a fine place to uh, leave it, Indy. I want to thank you very much and I uh, wish you uh, the you. very best uh, as we approach the objective of all the political parties. Uh, Indy Kato, uh, spokesperson of the Obidati Presidential Campaign uh, Council uh, on our program from Abuja studio. Uh, thank you very much once again, Indy. Okay.